Neue Schule and Heather Hyde, Introduction and Philosophy. Hi, my name is Heather Hyde and I actually founded Neue Schule um, several years ago now. I do have great difficulty talking about myself, but I do feel it's important that you know where I'm coming from because obviously, you know, I am advising you on bitting and a lot of aspects regarding um, bitting. And if somebody were giving me um, such important critical advice, I would actually want to know where they were coming from and the ethos of the company as a whole. So I've ridden from childhood. Um, I got my first pony when I was eight. Um, I've always had ponies and horses. I've competed in virtually every discipline. Um, I actually did experience a major bitting issue as a child uh, with one of my ponies and nobody could actually help me. It was very difficult. We did the usual things, full MOT, back saddle, teeth, um, you know, feet balanced, everything else coming through evenly from behind. And it transpired that it was a bitting issue. And I actually picked up on this as a child. My pony was wearing a single jointed bit, straight arm single jointed bit. We had, um, we didn't have a lot of options regarding design in those days and bitting wasn't really talked about. Um, the saddle was talked about as it is now, um, but bitting was never really a critical issue. We didn't realize the benefits and how influential um, a bit could be in those days. Um, so it was very, very different. And I came up through Pony Club and nobody could actually help me even um, within Pony Club. But I discovered that it was squeezing, the single joint was squeezing the outer edges of my pony's tongue. And they were red and they were very, very bruised. Um, I then tried a French link and he wasn't comfortable in a French link. I still had a head toss um, in, you know, through my downward um, transitions. And with the French link, I discovered that um, there were two little pressure points um, either side of the center. And that was where the loop was actually um, securing the flat plate of the French link in the center. Um, so it culminated in my farrier actually upon my request taking my straight armed single joint and bending it over his anvil he heated it up and he actually bent it into a much rounder profile my pony had a very very big fat fleshy tongue and the improvement was absolutely instantaneous from being a pony that had given me black eyes um, through actually throwing the head back owing to discomfort um, a pony that would bolt on occasions. Um, again, you know, we know now through discomfort, um, I had a pony that was actually so soft and light and round into the contact. So from a very, very early age, I've been very aware and very passionate actually about bitting. I've also actually done an awful lot of remedial work um, with horses, with um, problem horses. Um, actually the horses weren't the problem, it was generally speaking um, the previous owners that had been the problem. Um, if horses behaviour is um, extreme, it's usually through discomfort um, or it's through fear, it's through feeling threatened or it's because they don't understand um, what we're asking and they can panic. Um, and a horse's major form of defence is flight, as we all know. Um, so I have done a lot of remedial work and that has taught me an awful lot. Um, I had a grey horse in particular that I recall um, that was given to me the day um, literally 24 hours um, after he was actually meant to be destroyed because he was so dangerous. He had actually put three people in hospital. Um, I went, without going into too much detail, I went right back to basics, opened up um, a lot of lines of communication that hadn't previously existed. Um, to cut a long story thought, short, thought I was doing absolutely fine. Um, and the third um, sit-on with the horse, um, he did his usual party piece, which was to go straight up and over backwards. Um, and luckily enough, I did manage to get out of the way in time. Now again, um, this horse had had thorough MOT 
Um, this horse was actually um, destined to be a team horse, very, very talented horse. Um, he'd been away to um, universities and he'd had a, every single diagnostic procedure carried out in order to try and determine what the cause was. It transpired that the cause was oversensitivity within the mouth and that this particular horse, he was grey, he was pinky lipped, he was a thoroughbred, um, he couldn't bear me actually using um, the same design of bit for three consecutive days. He couldn't actually bear the same pressure points being employed for three consecutive days. Um, and an awful lot of times on the advice line, um, we have people phoning up and they will say, my horse was brilliant for a week or three months or whatever. And it's basically about managing the mouth. Uh, some horses can't take us employing the same pressure points constantly. So swap the bits around. Find, um, you know, several designs that work well, albeit for a short space of time. I call it your quality working window. Um, but it can be, oversensitivity can be, can be very, very easily managed. But again, you know, this is quite an extreme um, scenario. But this happens on a much smaller scale. And it's a very, very commonly, um, you know, um, aired um, situation actually on the advice line. I did for a while run an equitation centre, but I did find that teaching wasn't really what I enjoyed doing. Um, after the equitation centre, I opened up a stud. I've always been very passionate about breeding. Um, I've did an awful lot of breeding, an awful lot of showing at the warm blood shows. And so it was a natural progression that I actually did get, first of all, one stallion. However, this kind of snowballed as it does with horses and I ended up with seven stallions, about 20 brood mares of my own um, and visiting mares every season. We did natural services and we collected semen, uh, chilled semen, both for AI on the stud and for dispatch. And I thoroughly enjoyed um, every aspect of breeding. I'm very passionate about breeding. I think it's so important, um, you know, all aspects of foaling, handling um, the babies, handling them correctly, regularly, um, whatever they're going to do in life. I think that, you know, the formative um, interaction is so, so important. Um, and it's time that you can't actually get back. So that is a real passion of mine. I still have my own brood mares. Um, I have actually bred an awful lot of um, horses that have gone on to win major um, warm blood shows, both in this country um, and in Germany, etc. Um, I've bred some top class performance horses. Um, I do have um, a very special foal at the moment who I'm hoping will obviously go on and do something um, quite um, outstanding. So um, breeding and bitting are really the two things that I am most passionate about. I did actually open up a retail outlet um, on the stud. So I can actually identify with an awful lot of issues um, that retailers do have. However, bits having always been my passion, the bits started to take over. And I stocked all of the major brands of bits. Um, I brought in an awful lot of bits from abroad that hadn't previously been available um, within the UK um, and I started actually hiring the bits out. Um, I started a bit bank which was hugely successful and this is what really taught me an awful lot. Something um, no matter what you've delved into with horses, um, this really taught me so much. You couldn't get this from a book. Um, and it made me recognise that there were so many things that were missing um, in that particular um, market. Um, for instance, an awful lot of designs only went up in half an inch. And if you're paying um, more money for a better material and for a more ergonomically designed product, then it is really counterproductive not to be able to have a perfect fit. Um, and basically it was um, listening to riders, listening to the horse's way of going, um, discussing um, a multiplicity of evasions, um, mainly owing through, you know, through discomfort. Um, once a horse is comfortable, 
um, basically, and he fully understands the AIDS. Um, generally speaking, they are very responsive and only too willing um, to comply with whatever signals you're actually giving through the rain. So it taught me an awful lot about um, the market, as it were. Um, and I didn't do this from, um, it wasn't a business decision. It was basically actually trying to fill the gaps in the market um, in order to accommodate um, the horses, make the horses more comfortable. Um, and that was how Noya Shula actually did evolve. You know, wanting to develop um, a much warmer metal with much higher thermal conductivity so the horse wouldn't feel that it actually had a foreign body within the mouth. Um, a lot of horses are very overactive, um, very inward, you know, inwardly thinking, especially on the flat. Um, and, you know, so a, a much, much warmer metal that heats up within seconds so the horse didn't actually fixate on the presence of the bit within the mouth was a huge um, accomplishment. And then, you know, the very ergonomic designs that we do, studying uh, mouth anatomy, um, studying the horse's um, response. There's a lot of research that we have undertaken. There's a, there's a lot of research that we are currently um, undertaking. Um, in order to um, evolve um, the actual bits. Um, so basically, um, we do have a vast range of bits designed for comfort and communication, um, designed for the pleasure rider who just really, really wants to know the horse is as comfortable as possible and the signals are very clear through the rain. And then we have at the other end of the spectrum, we have bits for the very serious competitor, whether it's a dressage rider um, seeking fine tuning with doubles um, or whether it's our show jumpers or eventers. We also cater, and this was another thing that was hugely missing from the market, we cater actually for the ponies. Um, nobody had actually, you know, scaled the bits down to actually fit perfectly within the pony's mouth. Um, and we have the performance pony range, um, which actually starts at four inches, goes up to five, and it goes up in quarter inch increments. So again, you know, we can get a perfect fit for the ponies. For further product information, please visit your local authorised Noir Schuler retailer. Details of stockists are available on the Noir Schuler website at www.nsbits.com forward slash stockists. <laughs>